Hey, hey fam, welcome to Sino Archaeology, the number one spot all about electroforming of strange and nerdy jewelry that looks like it was found on planets far beyond our solar system. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I turned this idea into this bad boy, start to finish. Initially, I wanted to do a full articulating bracelet made of several individual pieces hinged together. I even thought of cutting the mystic stone in the center myself, because if you buy pre-cut stones, they usually come in very boring shapes only. And as you might know from my jewelry, I like my stuff to look organic and rough, kind of made by nature. But on second thought, I had to be honest to myself. As much as I would like to be the Megatron of electroforming, in reality, I'm closer to Duffy Duck. So I decided to size the project down a bit. A still pretty bold pendant with a pre-cut agate. First, of course, I had to choose a stone and measure the dimensions. With these real-world numbers, I hopped over to the computer and started modeling the pendant in 3D according to my sketch. I used the kit bash and basically noodled the final design together with several kit bash elements. Kit bashes are collections of little ready-made 3D objects that you can piece together like Lego. And who doesn't like Lego? After modeling, I made a quick 3D print on my Prusa Mini to check if the size is correct and if the stone would fit in nicely. After some minor tweaks, I printed the pendant on my frozen Sonic Mini 4K resin printer. On the finished print, I removed the supports, washed the uncured resin away, cured the print and sanded it. Now it was ready for the electroforming stage. Since agate stones can contain soft organic structures, they need to be sealed so the acidic solution won't dissolve the precious gem. I usually use three coats of clear nail polish. After electroforming, the nail polish can be easily removed by dipping the piece into nail polish remover or acetone. Since I plant the stone to be surrounded organically by the metal, I first painted the edges of the stone with conductive paint. Then I gave the pendant a good coat of conductive paint and then I glued the stone into the pendant with UV glue. I just love working with UV glue because you can decide the exact moment when it cures by shining a UV light onto the glue and it will turn solid immediately. After gluing, I slapped on a second layer of conductive paint. Maybe right now you think, dude, really? Why am I watching paint dry? because it's one of the most important things and so many pieces fail in the bath because the paint just wasn't dry enough. Simple rule here, the drier the paint, the more conductive it is. Now on to mounting the jig to the piece. For a simple piece, a copper hook would be enough, but this will be a pretty heavy piece once all the metal is plated on it, so I opted for a more rigid double mount jig. Before tossing it into the copper bath, I had to calculate the right numbers for the amps and volts to dial in on the rectifier. In order to calculate the amps, I needed to know the surface area of my piece. While for real world objects that can be tricky to calculate, it is pretty easy if your piece was designed on the computer. You can use free software like Autodesk Mesh Mixer that will tell you the exact value for your piece's surface area. I hopped over to the online calculator specific to my brand of copper solution and filled in the values. It sped out a whopping 12.7 amps. And since my rectifier maxes out at 10 amps, I had to reduce the volts to make that XL pendant happening at all. I popped the jig into the rotor jig and drowned the piece into the solution. Thank you. 
ETA for 300 microns of copper around seven hours. Inspection after the copper bath didn't show any issues and after rinsing it in demineralized water, I tossed it right over into the silver solution. The correct values for the rectifier came once again from the online calculator of my preferred brand of solution. ETA for 50 microns of silver, two hours. As expected, pieces electroformed with my brand of silver solution turned dull if layer thickness goes over 20 microns. But that's nothing that can't be polished in post-processing. Speaking of post-processing... First thing after taking the piece out of the bath is rinsing it thoroughly. Heavy as a cowbell but it turned out pretty nice so far. Then it's time for the D-jig, aka cutting off the wires that held the piece during the E-forming. After cutting the wires, I sand the two separation points smooth so they won't entangle with the clothes underneath when someone is wearing the piece. Next, I hop over to the bench and fire up the rotary tool with a steel brush to polish the whole piece to a shiny silver finish. Then I remove the clear nail polish from the stone by wiggling it in acetone for a few moments. Finally, I give it a good long swim in the ultrasonic cleaner. And there it is! A heavily nerdy and pretty noticeable pendant I solemnly call Tracek Vrach Balvukor. If you have any questions about this workflow, leave me a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer or learn from your inputs and suggestions. Until the next, happy e-forming folks, greeting from Switzerland, ciao zusammen.